My name is Rockin' Miller. I work on the ski patrol at Lake Louise Mountain Resort in Lake Louise, Alberta. One person on a slope, and lo and behold, the unexpected has happened, and uh, we've had an involvement. There's a good sequence of events that should follow in the event that you have an involvement with an avalanche and somebody is buried. Number one, assign a leader. Number two, take the time to make a call out. You may have a radio and be able to contact another party. You may just have a telephone and cell phone coverage is good there. By all means, make the call. I copy that and the, uh, the avalanche just happened. Number three, you need to assess further danger. Further danger might be additional snow above the fracture line. Maybe there's a cliff band. Your own safety is now of primary importance. Number four, best case scenario is you were able to keep an eye on your friend for as long as possible before he's under or she's under the snow. Number five, the stages of physically going after him. Switch your transceiver into receive and make sure everybody else in your group has switched to receive also. If you have further into the search area now, in this case, I'm searching from above. So I'm gonna use the efficiency of staying on my skis and I'm gonna zigzag back and forth, no further than 40 meters apart at my widest. That gives me a 20 meter search radius, which is pretty well optimal for any transceiver on the market today. Now I do have to focus on the last scene point. The person buried is likely below the last scene point thinking terrain traps, most likely burial areas, whether we can see him or any visual clues on the surface. Make sure okay. there's not a hand attached to it. If I had more people here, someone would come and probe all around here. But like I said, I want to make sure that his hand's not attached to it, and my beacon is my best bet. So I'm going to carry on here. Okay, I'm picking up a signal now. Let's just pause here a second and discuss beacon. I'm following this induction line in. Flux line, they curve, so I'm curving with it keeping my arrow in the middle and watching my numbers go down. There we go. Okay. Yep, now I'm getting close. Now I want to move into my pinpoint search. Kicking my skis off here. Getting my beacon low to the ground. This beacon's making lots of noise right now. And here we go. I'm going to work in a grid pattern here. I want to mark a strong spot here. Keep going until I notice it getting weaker. Definitely weaker here, back over the strong spot. Yeah, definitely strong there. Okay, weaker here, back to the strong. I want to go back this way, make sure that I'm really close. Okay, weaker here, back up this way. Okay, even stronger here now, that's great. Up here further, no, not stronger, strong. Definitely, right here, strongest spot. This is where... My probe's ready to go. Now there is a systematic way of probing to your first spot. Get an idea how deep that snow is. Okay, that deep. Now I want to spiral around it. 30 centimeters apart. Oh, okay, I got something here, strike. Now we're shoveling. That's tough digging. I want to start in from downhill if you're on a slope, or at least from some side, pointing towards where you think the end of your probe is, because that's where your buried friend is. So. Hey, 